about Maryland. And we are here today to talk to you about today, which is March 20th. It's the equinox here in the Northern Hemisphere. It is the spring equinox in the Southern Hemisphere. It's the fall equinox. We're gonna be talking about that today with two of our solar scientists. We have Alex Young and Nikki Vile. Alex Young is gonna start out by telling us what an equinox is. All right, so during the year, the Earth is rotating around the sun, but it turns out that it actually has a tilt like this as it's, as it's rotating. And so what that means is that during part of the year, that tilt is pointed towards the sun. During part of the year, that tilt is pointed away from the sun. But two times during that year, the tilt is like this. And what that means is that the northern and southern hemisphere are equally illuminated by the sun, what we call the equinox. And so today, it is the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere and the fall equinox in the southern hemisphere. So we're going to have a total solar eclipse that's going to come across the country. It's going to go from coast to coast. Um, and so when the eclipse happens, we've got a nice graphic here to show you. When the sun and the moon and the earth is aligned such that the moon's shadow is cast on the uh, 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 earth. And so we're going to be able to see that here on August 21st and it's going to go from coast to coast. It starts in Oregon, the path of totality crosses the country, and then it exits in South Carolina. Thank you. So back to our Earth here. The equinox is when the hemisphere is equally illuminated on both hemispheres so that the sun and the, the sun is equally illuminating both hemispheres so that day and night are equal length. The solstice is sort of the extremes when one of the hemispheres is pointed towards the sun and the other hemisphere is pointed away. When the northern hemisphere is pointed towards the sun, that's the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. At the same time, the other hemisphere, the southern hemisphere, is pointed away from the sun and it has a very long night and that's called winter solstice. Thanks for that. Um, another question that I hear a lot is what does the word equinox mean? Well, that's uh, Latin and it means equal night. During the equinox, you have equal day and equal night. Uh, Nikki, can you tell us a little bit about the science you study and how the eclipse can help? Yeah, so I study the solar corona. The solar corona is the sun's atmosphere. And what's really cool is that during a solar eclipse, we can actually see the solar corona from the Earth. So here's an image. Here's another image. Um, <laughs> What happens during a total solar eclipse is the moon totally blocks out the main disk of the sun. And so you can see the solar corona all around it. Um, and that's just really cool because the corona is very hot, a million degrees, and the solar surface is only 6,000 degrees, so we don't understand why the corona is so hot. It's kind of like if you were standing next to a fireplace and it got hotter as you walked away from the fireplace. It's a really interesting problem. We think it has to do with magnetic fields and a whole bunch of it magnetic energy that's in the corona. You can actually see all of these lines on these images. Those are magnetic fields, <clears throat> due to magnetic fields, and that energy being imparted into the solar corona. But we don't really understand exactly how that magnetic energy is imparted in the corona. So that's one of the things that we want to study. I want to add, actually, if this image continues, right after this, you're going to see uh, a spacecraft, hopefully, which is at something we're launching next year. This is uh, uh, an animation of the Solar Probe Plus spacecraft. So not only have we been looking at the corona from a distance, we're actually sending a spacecraft to the corona so that we can study it and touch it up close for the very first time. Yeah, it's going to be very exciting. But I think we need to talk about how people on the ground can look at eclipses and tell us a little bit about what is the safe way of doing that. I'm going to have Nikki start with sort of one of the easiest ways, some classes, uh, and then Alice can tell us a little bit about some things you can build to see them safely. I will demonstrate here. We have special glasses here so that you can safely view the total solar eclipse and you can put these on and it is safe to look at the sun when you wear these glasses. Um, it is very dark when you wear these glasses. It's, that's a good thing though because that will protect your eyes. It's not safe to look directly at the sun. So next, uh, if Karen, you could hand me that box over there. So one of the other ways uh, that you can look safely at the sun is using projection methods. So let me make a quick distinction. During totality, if you're in that special path, 
during that short period of time, it's actually very important that you don't use the glasses, that you look at the sun directly. It's the only time it's safe to do that because those glasses are so dark, you won't see anything. However, any other time, either outside of the path or during partial eclipse in the path, it is not safe to look at the sun. Even if 99% of the sun were covered, it's still dangerous. So what you can do, you can use the glasses or you can project an image of the sun onto something. So what I've done here is made a pinhole projector. So here's the sun. I've got a box on the inside is white paper. And then I've created two holes. One I've covered with tin foil and put a pinhole in it. So now with the sun, behind me, the sun is going to shine through that pinhole, project onto the back, and I can look through this other one and see the projection on the back side. You can do that with pieces of paper and mirrors. And you know what? Actually, the other thing that's really cool is during the partial phase of the eclipse, the shadows themselves become uh, crescent shaped. And so you'll look down on the ground during the partial part of the eclipse mm -hmm. and you will see these really cool crescent shadows. It's one of the coolest things I remember seeing about a partial eclipse. Cool. But Forrest has a question about that coronagraph data that we showed. He said, that was really amazing data. Are those ejections of matter really bigger than the sun? Because the way they appear, it does certainly seem bigger than the sun. They are enormous. These coronal mass ejections, of course, they start on the sun and so they begin in this uh, big ball of magnetic and plasma energy and then they explode out and this little circle right here that's the size of the sun so yeah these things get enormous as they propagate out into space and of course they can hit the earth and when they do they cause space weather effects like the aurora borealis which are really pretty and then they can also do things like damage our spacecraft here's one from the uh, international space station I believe. it is it yeah, is um, a movie of uh, the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, they're also called. Or Southern Lights, they're also or called. Southern or Southern Lights, Lights. Lights. Yeah. 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 people down in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, it's star, so here we can see, I don't know if that's Mercury that's or Venus. Venus. That's Venus. So that was when Venus crossed in front of our sun. Um, but anytime that happens, what happens is the light that we receive here at Earth goes down, and we can measure that. So if we, have, if we could bring up that graphic again, the one that was right before this. Yeah, that one. Um, whenever a planet crosses in front of its star, the light that we receive dims as a function of time, and we can measure how big the planet is based on how much that uh, the lightness decreases. And um, so that's one of the ways that we can find these exoplanets, these planets that are orbiting stars outside of our solar system. So it's a really cool, really cool way to find planets. Yeah, so if you could put up the image right after this, that telescope I wanted to actually add to it. So this is the TESS spacecraft. Mm -hmm. This will be launched soon by NASA, and it's going to do a survey of exoplanets and give us a huge number of optimal exoplanets. We then take that information and we use the new James Webb Space Telescope, which is currently being built here, and that's going to look at the atmospheres of those planets, measure chemicals, and tell us if we have the, the key signs of life by looking at the, those particular planets. Exciting stuff. Can you guys go over one more? We actually have some other models. Maybe we'll bring up uh, some of the yeah. other things I so, can play with and, and describe what's happening uh, with the Earth and the Sun. Pass me the Sun, oh, please. Oh, right. You can have the Sun. Okay. I got the Sun. So Alex is the Sun. Here we have the Moon orbiting the Earth. And when the alignment is just right, what will happen is the, the Sun-Moon-Earth alignment will make it so that the Moon blocks the Sun's light from the Earth's perspective. And the moon's shadow will be on the Earth. And so that's how a total solar eclipse works. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Because if I get this right, will you hold the Earth for a second for me? Mm -hmm. If I got this right, the moon is going around the Earth. Yeah. Why do we not have an eclipse every single night? Ah, ah good that's question. That's important, yeah. It's because some, the orbital plane is not perfectly aligned. The moon's orbital plane around the moon is not perfectly aligned with Earth's orbital plane around the sun. So this, it's slightly tilted like this. And so sometimes, it does align, but sometimes it's a little bit too high or a little bit too low, and it doesn't block the sun's light. Or it only blocks it partially. Right. Thank you very much. I will take all the accoutrement off, and then we'll answer some more questions. Right. I'm going to go back and get my earth and my sun, okay. and have you guys kind of walk through that again. Here's all right. The, here's okay. the little okay. earth, so, everybody. All right, here we are. I'm the sun, <laughs> you're the earth. I'm the earth. 
<clears throat> I'm going to be the bigger then. Yeah, that's a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. Not to scale. Not, yeah, not, not to, to scale. scale. <laughs> right. But this illustrates really well here. So during the equinox, um, the sun is equally illuminating both hemispheres, the northern and the summer, southern hemisphere. And what that means is we have equal sun, uh, day and equal night, because equinox means equal night in Latin. Um, but during the solstices, what happens is one of the hemispheres will be pointed towards the sun and the other hemisphere will be pointed away from the sun. And the one that is pointed towards the sun, that's the summer solstice. And then for the other hemisphere, that will be the winter solstice. Excellent. Wonderful. Thank you. We'll get rid of our props. Okay. I want to take a little break because we need to focus in on Alex Young's oh, yeah. shoes right yeah. here. I think this is an important thing that nobody's been able to see yet. These are Alex's solar shoes. <laughs> I don't know where you can get them. You can't get them on eclipse2017.nasa.gov. I wish you could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. The opposite alignment. So the kind of eclipse that we're about to see is where the moon is blocking the sun's light from the Earth's perspective. There's another kind of an eclipse. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> where the, the Earth is blocking the sun's light from the perspective of the moon and the Earth casts its shadow onto the moon. And then you can see what, it, what the moon looks like from here on Earth. And the interesting thing about that is, when that happens, the light that's passing the Earth is not blocked in the same way as the light of the moon because the Earth has an atmosphere. And so in fact, light around the edge of the Earth is refracted to the moon and what you're really seeing is if you've watched a lunar eclipse, you see this sort of red glow, sometimes called a blood moon or strawberry. That is actually the light creating sunsets around the Earth. So you're seeing a whole ring of sunsets cast onto the moon. But just remember, during totality, it's completely safe to look at the sun. But any other time, either uh, in the path or outside of the path, you need to make sure that you've got your solar viewing glasses. So that's the most important thing. Yep, there are some materials that you just can't use on Solar Probe Plus. They've definitely done a lot of work to make sure, uh, with engineers and so forth, to make sure that they choose the right kind of material so that it won't melt. But they've tested and they've um, found materials that will work. So uh, we're really excited about all the cool new measurements. We've never been this close to the sun. The closest that we've been before is Mercury's orbit. So Mercury is about a third of the way between the sun and the earth and we're going much closer. We're actually gonna touch the solar corona now. Thank Bye. you.